one of the things I wanted to do is just, what do you guys think? Like, what should we do? You guys are the experts. You've been doing this a long time. I think that's a big thing for me. It's just the trust I have in you guys because you've been doing this. Because you know this sport, you know what it takes. We're notable because of our people that we have working here. They come from race teams, really great welders and fabricators. Just years of experience from old CJs to two buggies to the full Ultra 4 race cars. Someone just gives you their vision of what they think it wants to be and a lot of times they don't they don't understand what's in between point A and point B mechanically. Building an Ultra 4 car from a, a technical standpoint or a person's ability you know you have to know all the systems in the vehicle from how a brake system works and making it balanced to you know, driveline angles from wiring an entire car where you need everything to work to shock rebuild. We build everything from headers to the exhaust system and the frame and all of it. You take the, all the working parts of the car, and take all of those options and turn them into something really great, something that has all the stuff that they wanted in it. We're known for that. We go way past normal builds as far as details and taking all of that knowledge and working on a regular guy's Jeep, I mean, that's just, that's kind of easy stuff for us. Nobody's better than the other, I believe. You know, we're gonna take care of the guy that just needs an oil change. Yeah, why don't we just do a quick walk around, kind of Yeah. tell me what you guys have been, been working on. What we would do in a, in a race prep is, is looking at some of the major key points, the suspension, the brakes, we, you know, right, right off the bat, we found that the brakes were really worn, the rotors were really worn, and the pads were a little thin, and so that's, you know, right off, that's, that's a quick, easy one there that is a consumable item. Instead of building something new, you know, you're, getting, you're buying a car that's got some, t some miles underneath it, and it, so a lot of the bugs have been all weeded out, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, pr it's proven and it performs. Found some plumbing issues that we just kind of rearranged, and just some packaging stuff too, and moved some stuff around. And you know, like I said, it's been raced a bunch, and it's it, the car works, and so it's just just small tweaks. Yeah, the valve covers were returned back into the intake tube. Yeah, when we wheeled it in Moab, we were having oil come out in yeah. some interesting places. And normally, when we set a car up, we we try not to vent the crankcase back into the intake system main reason is if the car rolls over and all that oil feeds back into the into the intake and then you could have a hydraulic issue so we try not to do that you know in a normal application it's okay for emissions and whatnot in a car but these cars spend a lot of time on their sides sometimes or upside down so sure. we try to protect the engine like that so we we did some re plumbing of the, the the vent system and uh it got it squared away where we'll make a mess but I love this even stuff where it's like they drew the diagram for how the belts yeah. go on, and, you know, all the funny stuff you wouldn't. Yeah. So we, we normally do that too. We'll, yeah. we'll actually draw it out and then we'll take an engraver and we'll engrave it to where if it gets wiped off with brake cleaner or something like that, it's still kind of on there. Because that's, that's simple things that, you know, a lot of people don't think about in a race is when you hit a big mud hole and it throws the belt is you get out and you're like, you know, shit, what I, I can't remember how the belt went on there. And right. It's just a simple... A uh, little trick like that, that you know, you can look at it and you're like, oh, okay, that's exactly how it goes. We actually machine some of the, the fittings to make them flow better and less restrictive and less heat. Just the small things like that really add up in a, in a system and kind of make it makes them survive and perform a lot better. Yep. Usually, you know, when we build like a mid-engine car. We'll try to take if you, if it can't be reclaimed, we'll try to take it out the very back of the car. If something happens, something gets hot and it starts. You can, you know, transmission or whatever, it's just gonna ride out of the back of the car and not catch on fire. Yeah. You know? Or if you roll over and you're in some weird spot to where the three sides and down doesn't work, you know, and it auto drains, it's not gonna drain all over your engine or exhaust, you know, so the mess is gonna be out back. You know, having that mass hanging out here, we like to keep it tight, so we move the tire in and down, try to change the center of gravity up a little bit to, you know, to where it's not so top heavy. Yep. And we reworked the batteries. The batteries were up underneath 
uh, the bottom of the car and they were a little hard to access and service so you know we use this space to uh, to utilize that to make it a little user friendly when you build a car you think about that a lot we do a lot of race prep on them we're working on them you know you don't want to build a car where it sucks to work on or it's you know it's a pain in the butt right the you know so that's one of the key things when we make something, even down to the smallest part, is serviceability. Yep. How easy it is to work on. And if you're on the side of the race course and you got a, something breaks or you know you need to fix something, right. you don't want to have it packaged so tight in there and buried in there, it's impossible to work on. Yeah. Yeah, the fuel cell was a little bit further back and some of the plumbing was needed a little love. Uh, so we reworked the plumbing and how it was routed and set up. And uh, once again, for ease of of serviceability, you know, changing changing the fuel filters or accessing, you know, stuff like that. Um, so we reworked a lot of it and made it nice. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Some cars I see today, they're amazing pieces of art, engineered on in CAD and, and SolidWorks, and you know, but when it comes to actually working on it, it's yeah, they it's, make everything fit. It's but it just fits. It just yeah, it's yeah. it's tight and it's. You know, it might take an hour to fix this one thing where, you know, you could design it totally different and it'd take you 10 minutes. Right. You know, like so. how Shannon Campbell can swap a freaking transmission out on the lake bed. Yeah. That's, we've been known to do that too. Yeah. I think we're actually a little bit quicker than he is. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we even brought the firewall. The firewall really didn't have, it had a technically a firewall. But right. It was really low, but we actually made this one come up a lot a lot higher in case there was an issue. It give you a little bit more protection. Cool. I think that's one of my favorite stories of Matt's is uh, it was a short course race. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> was it Reno? It was. It was um, uh, Prairie City. Prairie City. Yeah, Prairie Where City. Where he's coming around, and you're in the stands because it's short course, and you can see the whole course, right? Yeah, you I'm can on get the, to him if you need to. I'm on the radio spotting him, <laughs> and he turned the corner. And all we saw was fire underneath the car coming yeah. out of the belly. And I, I got on the radio, I was like, Matt, you're on fire. He goes, what? <laughs> and his first instinct was, man, I'm, I'm driving awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm killing it. I'm way out in front. And I was like, no, you are on fire. Like literally. Pull over. Yeah, you are on fire, fire. <laughs> and yeah, he peeled off, peeled off the course and they, they put the fire out pretty quick. But yeah, yeah. yeah we unfortunately had a, an injector O-ring go bad and just was dumping gas yeah. right on the exhaust and up she went. That's it's, the crazy thing. It's, it's, those... it's the five cent part that's gonna get you. Yeah. When it comes to racing in King of the Hammers, what's something either on the car or just for me personally, what is the stuff you need to be thinking about or, or doing to train or to get ready? King of the Hammers is, is something else. We've seen it all. We've been in snow you know, working on race cars, from rain to the mud to beautiful days. Oh, I've been at every King of the Hammers and raced in 08 and 09. I did some other regional races with Woodley and I raced with Kerry Steiner some and uh, then Adam started coming out. That was in 2010. We originally started working out of a you know small trailer down in the, in the main pit area and then uh, as time kind of went on, we've, we've moved up slowly and, and uh, now we're on the short course and it's pretty awesome. In that time, he became his own shop and he started fixing race cars and then got chances to build his own and then built a bunch. Well, man, the first couple of years we were all racing rock donkeys and Jeeps on air shocks. I mean, we were going with the race was short and we just weren't <laughs> it still took all day it took all day to go 20 miles you know and now they're going 260 miles or whatever it was last year yeah it's it's crazy the cars are so fast the technology is through the roof the tires are crazy now suspension systems are crazy you know I'd, I'd be interested to know what the most expensive car was on the lake bed that first year you know Race prep is, is, is really important. The devil's in the details, and that's where a lot of teams that have a lot of issues, you know, it's just the smallest thing that could be overlooked. It, the smallest things seem to take the longest time. Of course, you're out there on the surface of the moon, you can't get anything, or it's just everything 
takes longer, but to have less time for it. I think a lot of it is, you know, we figured it out from experience from years and years of the small one loose nut that, you know, that bit you, one of those things. And if you really want to put together a, a well prepped race car, it's, you've got to go from tip to toe and, and you can't miss anything. You know, you got to check it all. A lot of it's mental, um, you know, being able to stay focused, having a good co-driver that can stay focused, which I find myself not so focused sometimes, uh, but calling corners and, you know, make sure the drivers stay sane and calm and, and, you know, really working together as a team. Sure. Matt and I, when we raced, we had it down and we killed a tire. It was faster for me to get out, change the tire while he stayed buckled in instead of him helping me. And then we both got to buckle up. You know, we, we practiced that and, and, and many times we had to do it, you know, I could get out and change the tire in, you know, a few minutes, throw it back in and while I'm in the car, we'll start going while I'm buckling just to shave that little bit of time out. Right. And there's a lot of races that really, you know, it comes down to those few minutes that really make or break a, a position. Yeah, it's been interesting. I've been watching like the previous races, like at Hammers, just to kind of like, okay. I'm, I mean, even just sitting on the couch and watching those guys all day, you're like, woo, this is insane. Tiring. <laughs> you can sit in a car. You've got the adrenaline going. Well, it's funny because even like Terry Madden was like, "Cool, once a week you should wear a helmet all day." And I was like, "Huh, that's not a bad idea." He's like, "Yeah, your neck is gonna hurt." Yeah. You know, you got to get used to that. Yeah. Build up those muscles. So. One of the big shocks for me, you know, I don't physically train, but when you are in a race situation and you got to get out and you got a winch or you got to get out and change a tire yeah and you've got that and it's during the middle of the day now it's warm and it's hot and you've got to climb up some rocks and you're in a helmet and a full race suit and you're stepping on your catheter and you're you know all these things it's like you your your stamina and your it just goes yeah when you smack something and you got to get out there and you fix it you know it's being prepared and knowing how to fix it quickly is is the biggest thing the top dogs, they're, they're athletes, and they push their cars so hard that they physically need to be in, in shape, you know. I mean, it makes it fun, too, as it's real challenging. You gotta, you gotta man up and keep going and do yeah. it. You gotta get it done. You're not gonna sit down and take a break. No, <laughs> no. I think for me, getting into the desert and seeing how hard you can push it, yeah, it's going to be interesting. That's the one that we always had issues with: how hard could we maintain control in the chop, like in the real, the really nasty shit, yeah. where the stars, car starts getting out of out of sorts. And I, I always thought that Matt's race car always needed more tuning, shock tuning. And you know, we would shock tune at the hammers, but then you we, you know, once the car is warmed up and you're really at pushing hard it's like it's totally different you know we would lose control car would be doing this sideways like shit we're about to tump it you know it's, you're just constantly trying to save it but and then you get on some sections where it's kick ass you know it's like you get on top of it and it's it works pretty good yeah when you have a limited vehicle it's hard to get it to do everything you know it's, and you just got to accept that so true you know, just yeah. have to drive you just gotta drive what you can see and drive what the car can do. And yeah. That's it. You just gotta learn how to just, you know, drive its limits. I get a lot out of helping those people get where they wanna be and have lifelong relationships that revolve around what you do, you know. Make their car where they wanna have it and have the confidence to take it out and use the hell out of it without tearing it up. <laughs> yeah. I want Tribe to be known for the quality and work, number one, is us, you know, putting out good stuff. Like I said, if it involved a, a tube chassis or a, a buggy or a race car or working on, a, you're just putting a lift kit on somebody's Jeep, you know, I want everything to be, to be spot on. And I think customer service after that, making sure we, we, you know, keep our name out in the industry that, you know, that we're, we're good people here and, um, you know, we'll follow up and, and take care of you. We moved out to Texas now, and um, it's just really cool getting to know you all and, and hang out. And so 
I don't know, there's just been this awesome connection with you guys since we met. You know, getting a ride in, in the 4510 and qualifying and, and being in your guys' pits and just seeing how you guys operate. Like, I don't think there's anyone I would, when, when we talked about doing this and thought about doing this, you know, I didn't want to work with anyone but you guys, so.